All right, everybody, welcome to Rat Race Reboot. I am so excited today to welcome our guest, Lauren Sweeney, to the show. And she's the vice president of Rise Up For You. She's coached numerous people, women around the world, multiple Fortune 500 companies. And I'm excited to get into conversation with her. The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Rat Race Reboot. I'm your host, Laura Noel. And as a certified coach and former 27-year military leader, each week I provide bite-sized mindset pivots that will help you reset your mind, reawaken your spirit, and regain your control. Hello, hello, and good morning, everyone. Today, again, I am excited to welcome Lauren Sweeney to the show. And I wanted to read a couple of lines here from her bio. She has so much wonderful goodness in there. Um, She's an amazing human. And I had the opportunity to uh, guest on her show, which was a wonderful conversation. So we can link it in the notes as well. But I love this. Lauren Sweeney is an activator and a creative thinker, and I love that. She has a heart for public service, which is so amazing. Disciplined, coachable, goal-oriented, she's driven by challenges and has a passion for leadership development and collaboration, which I think we can use more of that in the world. Lauren has spoken for thousands of people on confidence, personal leadership, uh, women in the workplace, and more. And she's been featured on multiple podcasts. Uh, Shout LA Magazine, and recognized in a number of California Chamber magazines. She's spoken on HR, education, women in leadership conferences throughout the U.S., and she's having an impact all over the world. So, Lauren, once again, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Excited to be here, Laura. Well, I'm excited to have you, and I'm excited to share with our listeners. As you know, Rat Race Reboot is all about helping people reset their minds, their thinking, uh, connect with their higher purpose in life, and so they can regain control in their life, in their situations, in their work situations, personal lives, whatever that may be. And I was really intrigued by the work you're doing. So what I would love is maybe for you to share with our audience a little bit about you, where you've come from, and where you are in your journey today. I love that. Well, I'm excited to be here with you all. I live in California, and I have two little kids, six and nine years old. And before I worked for Rise Up For You, which is an education, we do emotional intelligence and leadership training around the globe. Before I worked for them, I owned my own company for 17 years. And so I coached women and we sold cosmetics and it was an incredible industry to learn those leadership, those confidence skills and to see them in real time. And I can talk later today as well about kind of the rug pull that I think a lot of us, especially women, but all genders experience at some point in our career of trying to climb a ladder. And that led me to working uh, for Rise Up For You and kind of doing the inner work that now I do with our clients. Oh my gosh, that's so wonderful. And I definitely am interested and I know our audiences too. Um, What was that rug pull moment for you? What really helped you make that transition? So I was in my career and there was this there was this carrot <laughs> and and you, you're you listening or watching us live today you may have that right this something this goal you just have to achieve and everyone around me thought we have to you have to achieve it once you achieve it you will achieve the company car the bonus the status the prestige all of it and so i thought at all costs i have to achieve that I mean, you just have to, right, Laura? You, I mean, it's just, it's just like you have to achieve it. Right. That's an expectation. So it's it's an expectation, something I wanted to do. So I climbed the career ladder, working so hard to achieve it. And one day, I do. I finally reach that title, that promotion. And I'm like, oh, I get the car. I get the bonus. I get everything that was promised. But Laura, the rug pull is I thought that I would finally feel good enough once I had achieved it. Uh, Yeah. And that did not occur. And I couldn't see that, you know, it's, it's that saying of like, you can't see the label when you're inside the jar. Yeah. 
people would tell me like, oh, you're so driven. What's the big deal? It's just a promotion. Yet I, I couldn't, I couldn't see it until the rug was pulled. And I saw, oh, I thought when I achieved that level of success and I get that prestige and people know who I am, then I'll feel good enough and it will all have been worth it. Wow. I, and so what what was it that you, you had this moment where it was just a big aha and you just figured, wow, I'm here. I did all of the things. Um, I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, what I thought I should be doing or what, you know, moving in the direction that aligned with I th- with what I thought was my expectations of myself or the organizational expectations of everyone else. So what was it for you when, when you were in that moment um, that really shifted thing? You had that aha where I, I'm here. Okay. Now what, <laughs> where's the, where's the confetti and, and all of that? What did you do next? Well, that's when I started working with Netta, who's uh, our CEO at Rise Up For You, and did coaching with her. And we talked about this idea of macro micro confidence. And pretty much, you know, you and I are in the United States. We may have listeners all across the globe, but in the United States, especially, we're really taught who we are is our titles and our skills. Hi. I'm Lauren. Nice to meet you. What do you do? (laughs) Instead of like, who are you or any of that. And a lot of the countries, maybe Scandinavian regions, it's it's even documented. There's a world happiness report. (laughs) And in the US, we don't rank very high because we really don't treat people as the whole person. It's all about our career. I mean, that's like all in our titles. And and when we don't have those titles, we feel like, oh, well, who am I? Yeah. Uh And So that's when I started working on it and the macro confidence, the micro confidence is our titles and our skills, which like, you know, I have a college degree. I have titles and skills. Yes. But that doesn't really sustain us and they can go up and down. The macro confidence is who we really are. So I'm a tenacious, creative, caring, incredible woman. And I was that when I was a little kid and your superpowers, Laura, and everyone listening Those superpowers you had when you were probably five years old, you have them now as an adult. And that's the cool thing is those don't really go away. And so as I shift to understand, and I feel like it's a process, I don't think I've really arrived, right? (laughs) Right. As I shift to understand that who I am is really those superpowers Mm, or identify with myself as those, it's so much easier then to go, okay, whatever it is that I'm achieving career-wise not that I don't like to achieve things, but it's not who I am. Mm. I, you know, I, I love that. And similarly, I had an experience when I also transitioned and rose to the ranks and the upper echelons of my work. And I was like, I should be happy. I'm, I'm achieving all of these goals and the things. And we sound very similar where from the outside looking in, it was like, wow, that's really impressive. But I thought, oh, this next mountain, then I'll feel happy. Or, oh, all right, well, I'll climb another one. And it, it just never happened. And, you know, what I experienced too, and it sounds like you did as well, and a lot of people we've talked to is we're looking outside of ourselves for the answers and that validation and It's inside of us. And I love that you brought up these superpowers that we have and we've had since we were children. I mean, we're, our minds are little sponges when we're growing up and we're taking in the world around us. And we, we don't have those concerns about our titles or all these things. All of these concerns are man made, really. And if we can adopt and get connected with who we truly are on a deeper level, you were saying a macro level, then it it can shape and shift our world <laughs> it's and we can really step into our fullest potential and i love that i love that story exactly and so that led me to doing my own inner work and then wanting to work for this company called rise up for you and so here i am doing this work and having the privilege to work on this with others executives leaders entrepreneurs building those soft skills and at the core remembering who i really am oh i love that and i i know that you're helping so many people it's one of those pieces that i think is missing 
in in corporate and trainings because we want to kind of get to the root of it. Like, what's your title? What do you know? Um, what's the goal? What are the targets? What are the KPIs? And let's move. But really, it's the people who are accomplishing the mission. And it makes sense to to focus on the people and help them have these ahas for themselves because it's it's just going to help the team function a lot better. Um, so I would love to hear about the work you're doing with Rise Up For You and, and take us through a, a little bit of a, a journey in terms of how you help uh, these organizations and these teams. Yeah, so I love the the soft skill development. It's, you know, we are in 2022 now. And in 2021, we know a lot of things happened, including the Great Resignation, where a lot of people were thinking, you know, this is a not, it's all cracked up to be. And they're looking for culture. One of the books I'm, I, I'm reading right now is from Gallup, Strength Finders. <laughs> if yeah. you've heard of them, yes. great, great organization. And it's called, it's the manager moving from boss to coach. And that's a lot of what we do at Rise Up For You is people are craving being coached versus being managed. They're craving conversation especially certain generations. So like I'm on, I just made it to being a millennial and there people are craving those conversations of how are you doing? What do you need? What's working here? What's not working? How can we have collaboration? How can we be creative? What works best for you with your life? And do you want to be in a hybrid work environment? Like all those things People are not looking for a once a year performance review. They're looking for ongoing quarterly conversations at at a minimum. And so that's what we help companies do is look at their culture from the inside out and the outside in and do emotional intelligence assessments that help them understand from a 360 degree perspective, what is happening? How do I use our values and what's important to us to hire? How do I put our values in a key statement in hiring? And then what does the onboarding look like? And how, again, are our values and our culture infused? Then what is the ongoing development process? What does our mentor map look like? Most things that especially small and medium-sized businesses that are really working on the business, in the business all the time, and don't often have a chance to step and have a bird's eye view of their business. Uh, That is so valuable. And, uh, you know, and even from the the perspective of bringing the right people into the organization, I you know I was doing some work with an organization and their job description process, and I started asking them kind of, well, what core competencies are you looking for in people, and how does that inform your training, and how does that inform your their development path, and because skills you can teach. I mean, of course, you want the requisite skills, but. If a person that their values don't align or they or they choose not to align their values with those of the company, wouldn't it be great to know that? <laughs> and, um, so I, I think that's so valuable and it's so it's so important. People just want to get to it, right? But having these things ironed out and thought through, it, it's it's a tremendous you know night and day between when an organization doesn't do that and one does. Do you have any um, stories that you'd like to share of like kind of like a before and after and how things have shifted? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the companies we work with, they're in the finance industry. And before we came to work with them, they hadn't done performance reviews in maybe two, three years. People didn't really know where they were at with their profit sharing. There were some key pieces missing ingredients in the culture. There wasn't a lot of intention in the culture, kind of treading water. And granted, we met them during COVID. So it, it's just a lot, right? Yeah. Now, fast forward to a little bit over a year later, working with them quarterly, they have set performance reviews. They have a mentor map so that people know who they're mentoring, like even just down to that. And then how they're being mentored. How are they being coached and trained? What does Brenda need versus Paul needs something else? What does that even look like? And how are they providing that for them? Having conversations and being really clear on the culture. I like to think about it like a ship. You're turning the ship's rudder, right? And it takes a lot of energy to turn the direction of the ship. 
but you at least have a target. You at least have a direction. We know that we're going to the Bahamas on the ship on the, you know, hypothetically, (laughs) right. We know where we're going and that creates such a sense of hopefulness of, of, I don't even know if it, if peace is the right word. I feel like I feel peaceful as an individual, but as a company culture, knowing where we're going, hiring with those value statements in mind so that you keep people longer and you know if they're a good fit, doing not just those hard skills, right? So if you're a finance company, a tech company, whatever industry you happen to be in, there's obviously certain skills people need. But adding in that piece of that those soft skills makes such a difference. I have a great story for you. Our uh, CEO, Netta, she used to work, she used to be an executive at a company before she started Rise Up For You. And when she would hire, sometimes this was pre-COVID and we didn't hire on Zoom, right? In person. (laughs) And she would often pretend that she was like, you know, somebody just cleaning the lobby. And she would come and just kind of sweep, maybe empty the trash and notice how the candidate who was sitting in the lobby waiting to talk to her would interact with her. Wow. How would how were their soft skills? How were their people skills? Yeah. How did they treat her? They didn't know she was the executive, right? And then they would come back to her office and kind of <laughs> be shocked that she was the executive. But it would speak to like their character, right? Yeah. How you treat people in one way is how you treat people, hopefully, 360. Mm. So it's amazing to watch, in particular, circling back to this tech company we've worked with, the dedication to the mission and the culture. And is in, it's so inspiring to see the shift and to have people bought into a vision that they created. You know, you support what you create. Uh, Yeah. And well, what I love is, you know, in the midst of this great resignation, um, people, if they're not getting what they want, or they don't feel like they have a culture with psychological safety or a place where they can grow, they're, they're going to leave. And so having these conversations, it's so important. And I love that story um, about observing somebody, a candidate in, in the waiting area, and seeing how they interact with people, because, you know, it's interesting, I, you know, as a coach, and I know that you're always developing yourself too, I continue to get coached, and I continue to learn and grow. And that's an important part of, of my journey as somebody who owns her own company, right? It's, and I want people to continue learning and growing, because as you mentioned earlier, we don't know it all. We're, we're constantly peeling back layers of the onion and getting a deeper understanding of ourselves and when we can do that, we understand other people much better where, the, where they might be coming from. And it, it's, um, it's interesting because it's so in alignment with uh, a training class that I was in this uh, week for two days in the D.C. area. And it was called Outward Mindset, which is what you're describing here. And, you know, how we can see people as either vehicles to get us somewhere else as obstacles of, of like things getting in our way or as irrelevant. And it's surprising if you really take stock and think about every situation you're in. Like when you sit in the, the Uber car, are you immediately going to your cell phone or you like putting the blinders on? Are you just, is this person just a vehicle or irrelevant to you? Or are you engaging with that person? And I, you know, reading Thomas Troward, um, it's called his, one of his um, essays, it's called Entering into the Spirit of It. It really hit me after going to this training and then getting an Uber ride to the airport. And I had done my, my daily study in the morning, reading this, entering into the spirit of it. And this one paragraph, I took a picture of it. I wanted to do a post on it, but it talks about this vivifying action between you and the person or the the activity that you're engaging in and how when you it it adopts this kind of livingness when you engage and you you vivify that person and then they kind of in turn fill you up and so when i was in the uber car I met this wonderful gentleman um, from Nepal and he was sharing about his family and his upbringing and we were talking about yoga and um, philosophy. It was just such a, a heartwarming conversation and I felt seen, I know he felt seen and it, it, 
he felt appreciated. I sure did. But, you know, we're, we're out and about doing the things in our lives that we're ordinarily doing. It doesn't take more time to engage and connect with people, but the impact that it can have in an organization, which is what you were describing in, in everyday life, is remarkable. Absolutely. Yes. I love that story. I could almost feel my hyperachiever getting nervous as you're talking about it (laughs) because I'm thinking, well, yeah, I'm going to get in that Uber and I'm going to get on my phone and be productive. Right. (laughs) And so connection first over telling kind of that sabotaging hyperachiever. It's okay. Just relax. Take this time and connect right now. For example, with an Uber driver. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it, we forget to do that in our organizations too. Um, sometimes I find that I get so busy because I'm that type A person and I'm, I'm passing on some tasks to my team, but I'm thinking I'm too busy to engage. No, this is important. Like understanding what people's hopes and dreams are, what what their challenges are, how might I be getting in their way to achieving some of their goals? And it requires exactly the work, the wonderful work that you're doing um, with helping people bridge that gap. And so it's so important. Uh, my hat's off to you. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> as, as we're talking about connecting with people, we had this happen in, in our organization recently. I got some feedback that I was like too driven, too focused on you know, the task and one of our team members felt like unimportant, unheard. And what's so great is we have a culture of communication. And so I notice that sometimes I will be, and this is that self-awareness and the EQ piece, yeah. be so in a mode of getting something done that I miss actually being direct with the person and I'll just deflect by being busy. So I love that emotional intelligence work to notice, okay, what's going on? What's my self-awareness? Then how do I manage it? so that I can have awareness of what's going on around me and pick up on somebody else's nonverbal cues. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, we can all get caught up in it. And I remember I was at a personal development seminar and we were doing an exercise where we were offering instructions to people. We all took turns and we were guiding a team of other women. And so I would have people do this work over here and then I would leave and then I would get people set up over here and I was kind of making rounds and like checking in with people. And a lot of people, they felt like they were cared for, but then there was one person who said, I felt abandoned. And I was Mm. like, oh, because sometimes we think we're helping people, but we're we're helping from our, my little air quotes, <clears throat> we're helping right. from our own perspective. And so these conversations that you're helping facilitate, people can get to know, well, what is helping? What do you need help with? Let, let me help you. And we're not helping the person, in fact, at all. But having these conversations, you know, um, how, how may I help you? Can I help you? How have I been hindering your, your forward momentum? Um, let's have a conversation about that. What's, what's helpful for you? Um, that in and of itself is, is um, it's huge. And, you know, also you'd mentioned how sometimes we can get busy and we can get focused on the task instead of focusing on that development that person might need, I think the biggest gift when we um, take the time for the people on our team to to educate and to fill with great, meaningful feedback, that is such a huge gift. You're not treating that person as, you know, an obstacle or, oh, I got to stop what I'm doing to, to give them this. You know, I... I was um, talking with another coach who was going to watch me facilitate. And he's like, be prepared because you're going to have like 20 pages of notes. I'm going to be looking at like, you said this here and, and here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, somebody as busy as this person, what a gift. I'm not going to waste that. And so when we pour into each other, the, the payback and the, the dividends, right? It, it's, it's incredible. Absolutely. I think one of the things that we have to bring intentionally to our organizations right now is those conversations that also don't have anything to do with the job at hand. Because we used to, most most companies we're working with, and especially in the United States, in the UK, even Canada, and all over the globe, we're mostly not 
all back in the office together. And so we used to have those conversations that were casual where I'm getting my Nespresso coffee and you're talking to me while you're getting your lemon water, whatever it is. And we had those kind of casual conversations of getting to know each other, of, you know, caring about each other outside of the office environment. And we mostly don't have that at, at all or very limited. And so how can we create that even if we're in a hybrid or totally remote environment? How can we bring intentionality? How can we bring fun team building? How can we create an open office hour where it I'm just available? How can we have a I love this. I I had a someone interviewing on my podcast and she said we have before a huge client meeting a half an hour of we just talk about our feelings. We just talk about how we're doing. (laughs) We have open-ended conversation questions that have nothing to do with the client. And it's just our internal team just sharing, like, how was your weekend? And how are you doing? And anybody can come who wants to, and it's a safe space. How do we create those intentional conversations so we can feel connected, feel related, and then move forward and create incredible impact? Mm, I love that. I And so... Do you also guide clients through that that landscape of being on Zoom or having those hybrid workforces? Absolutely. So we'll do leadership. We'll do team building. We'll do trainings that involve breakouts, that involve strategic conversations, interesting questions. We will actually help an executive craft their week so that they have an open office hour, they have time. So we'll kind of look at the organization, see what's needed based on those EQ assessments, and then put those missing pieces in and or do a full on facilitation for them virtually, or we'll do in person. We have a, a nonprofit that's amazing. And we're going on site for an all day intensive leadership team building retreat, uh, because this nonprofit hasn't been remote. They work with youth and they're all in all the time and they need a reset because being in person, (laughs) especially here in California, it's been interesting. You know, we had a very interesting January in 2022, not to mention the last two years. So that is something that we do where we help curate and craft that curriculum. That's really going to create a transformational experience now in the moment, not later, not go do homework and think about it, but what can I help you create right now? And then how do I put things in place to help it be sustainable? Oh, I love that. Yeah. Cause there's, there's a difference between learning something intellectually versus applying it, internalizing it and utilizing it now because you want people to have the benefit of, of that acquired knowledge and using it. I love that. So if somebody wanted to work with you, kind of, can you tell me, one, how they can get in touch with you, and two, what process would you walk them through to you know, help them get aligned and, and start working on some of these things? Absolutely. So our favorite platform is LinkedIn. Uh, you can find myself, Lauren Sweeney, our CEO, Netta Nasserdine, um, and our whole team. You can go to Rise Up For You on LinkedIn, or you can go to our pages as well. Of course, our website is riseupforyou.com, and you can find our LinkedIn links there. You can also find a lot of free resources if you're an individual, an entrepreneur, or an executive or running a company. Those types of resources, EQ, time management, public speaking, confidence are all free downloads on our website, riseupforyou.com. The best thing that a organization can do is have a strategy call with us where we look at the organization and see what is missing. What is something that's really not working right now? What are your pain points? What are things that are keeping you up at night or that you would just love to have solved and you're not sure how? We can show you how we can solve them, how we can add value to you, and then we can show you a proposal of something that would make a difference for you. If you're a large organization and you're looking to maybe do some DEI initiatives, we have emotional intelligence cohorts that we start inside of larger companies, also women in leadership programs that we run for companies all over the globe. So those are things that we can help you with depending on the size of your organization. Oh, I love that. So many resources right there at your fingertips. Um, I love that. I thank you so much for being on our show. I know that people, our listeners, are going to get so much value from this. And I definitely encourage you to reach out to Lauren and rise up for you and get some of that support you need. Lauren, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our audience? 
Well, one of my favorite quotes is the, the image of the a harbor with all the boats in it, that rising tides lifts all boats. And that as you gain in your soft skills, as you gain in your confidence, as we gain in relating to each other, as you said, Laura, it makes an impact with others. And oftentimes we're trying to like make an impact with everyone else. <laughs> yeah. If we are better, if we are growing, if we are more self-aware, it automatically overflows to those around us. Oh, I love that. It's so true. Uh, thank you so much once again. Um, for those of you listening, please leave your comments on our episode at ratracereboot.com, wherever you listen to podcasts. The show notes will have those listed with all of the, uh, Lauren's contact information. So definitely take advantage. She has a lot of wonderful resources for you as well. And today we're going to close our episode the way we always do, just taking three minutes to connect with yourself, your thoughts, and maybe for today, think about something in your organization that maybe isn't going the way you'd like. Maybe um, some conversations that need to be had or some difficult conversations you might be dealing with. And give it some thought, what would you like to see as opposed to that? So we're going to play some music in the background and just sit quietly, have your feet firmly planted on the floor. We're going to have a nice and lovely image in the background if you're watching us. Just take a deep inhale through your nose and exhale fully and completely. Take another deep inhale and exhale. you to bring to mind maybe something that you're working on, whether it be personal, a personal goal, or something in your organization, or your home life, something that you might be struggling with. And now I want you to shift that image thinking about if there were no obstacles and if you could wave that magic wand, what would you rather this situation be like? How would it be unfolding? How would that conversation that you need to have and want to have feel if it were easy? If you were heard and received, you were responding exactly the way you would feel proud to respond. And as a result, those responses toward you and your results reflected that inner peace and that confidence your superpowers that are already inside of you. How does it feel to be you in this moment? Take in that scene through your five senses. Who are you talking with? Who are you serving? And what kind of a difference are you making? And ask yourself, what can I do today to move me in that ideal direction? And just listen for inspiration and ideas to float to the top of your mind. Thank you, everybody, and welcome back. It's been a pleasure once again speaking with Lauren Sweeney. 
I hope you take advantage of getting in connect, a connection with her. Wonderful resources. Definitely, if you've enjoyed today's podcast, leave us a review on whatever platform you listen to your podcast on. Uh, subscribe on our YouTube channel or follow us on whatever podcast platform you listen to your podcasts on. We enjoyed having you on the show and we will see you next week. But until then, remember, everything is created twice. First in your mind, always, and then in physical form. We'll see you next week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.